Hey folks, so this is the second video on the ellipse section. And so if you would, please go down to example number two. This video is going to be dealing with example number two and example number four. All right, so we're going to be writing equations in this video. So let's read the directions. It says to write the equation of ellipse that has the center at the origin. Okay, so immediately I know that my center, my HK, is at 0, 0. I have foci at negative 5, 0 and positive 5, 0. Now, I've been trying to get you used to doing this throughout the circles and the parabolas. Anytime you have um, a certain set of information that you can draw, go ahead and draw it. It's going to hand you a lot of, um, of info just by putting it down on a picture. So I've already got my picture started over here, and I noticed that my 5 and my negative 5, these guys are both focus points. So that immediately tells me that my C value is 5 because C is the distance from the center to the focus. Um, and then the second thing that I'm told, um, actually, that was the second thing. The third thing that I'm told is that the major axis is 18 units long. The major axis is 18 units long. Now, I want you to come back up to our pictures that we had. Um, and it doesn't matter which picture you use. The major axis is going to be the long axis, the one that goes from vertex to vertex. Now, if this whole entire axis is 18 units long, then what is my A value? Be careful on this. If the whole axis is 18 units long, my A value is going to be 9 units because my A value is the distance from the center to the vertex. So my A value is 9 units long. All right, so then um, let's go ahead and um, figure out what we know so far. Um, I know that my C value always deals with my focus. Since I'm supposed to write an equation, I need my H, my K, I have both of those. I need my A, I've got that, and I need my B, I don't have that. So I'm going to use little dude. Since I know what my A and C are, I can easily find out what my B is. All right, so we'll plug in what we can. And uh, my C squared is going to be 25. My A squared is going to be 81. I'll add B to both sides and subtract 25 from both sides. So my B squared is, is 56. Okay, so the goal was to write an equation. So let's start writing our equation. Um, up on top for the first fraction, it's fraction plus fraction equals 1. Up on top for the first fraction, I'm going to have x squared, or you could say x minus 0 squared because my hk is 0, 0. For my second fraction, the numerator is going to just be y squared. Again, you could put y minus 0 squared, but of course, we, we would want to clean that up. Now, the next thing you have to decide on is which is the larger denominator. Well, when I look at my picture, I can tell that this is going to be a horizontal ellipse. So my larger denominator needs to be under the x's. My a squared needs to be under the x's. So my a squared then is going to be 81. My b squared I found was 56. So this is the equation. This is what I was asked to do. And that's the only thing that I was asked to do. All right, let's take a look at part b. Part B says, again, write an equation. The center this time is at 2, 0. So I know that this is my H and K. Remember, to write an equation, you need your H, your K, your A, and your B. The minor axis is equal to 6 units. The major axis is equal to 9 units. And the major axis is horizontal. Okay, so um, when I know that the major axis is equal to 9 units, that tells me that my A is equal to half of that, so 9 halves. Yes, you could say 4.5, but it's much more difficult to deal with 4.5 than it is to deal with 9 halves. So I'm going to deal with the fraction on this. My minor axis is 6, so this tells me then that my B value is 3. All right, so, um, and I've already written those down. Sorry, I just forgot to uncover them. So my A is 9 halves, my B value is 3. Okay, so let's start writing um, my equation. 
Up on top of the first fraction, I'm gonna have my x minus h squared. So that's gonna be x minus two quantity squared. The second fraction, the top is gonna to be y minus zero squared. So I can just write y squared. Um, I'm told that my major axis is horizontal. So that means the larger denominator needs to be under the x's. So my larger number then, uh, my a squared is going to be 81 fourths. And you say, well, how did you get that? Well, nine halves times nine halves is 81 over four. By the way, it's a lot easier to square nine halves uh, mentally than it is to square 4.5 mentally. Just saying. All right, my um, bottom of my second fraction, my b squared, is going to be three squared, which is nine. Now, to be honest with you, I'm totally fine with this as an answer. Um, I can't remember if my lab will accept this as an answer. I think it does. Let me know if it doesn't. Um, but um, the, the reason that um, it might not is because this first fraction is not simplified. Again, for the test, I would be fine with this as an answer if this is what I, um, if this is the equation that I was asking for. So how do I simplify it a little further then? Um, you remember that when you're dividing fractions, all you have to do is multiply by the reciprocal. So if I take that 81 fourths and I flip it over and multiply, then my four is gonna be on top and my 81 will be on bottom. And so that's the only thing that will change. My second fraction actually won't change here. All right, part C. Again, we're writing an equation. Um, this time, my foci are at neg three, neg three, and seven, negative three. And so you can see here that I've already started drawing a picture. And um, the first thing that I'm gonna do is find a center. Well, let's see, if the foci are both here, I know that my center is gonna be smack dab in the middle of those. These guys are 10 units apart because you've got seven on one side and three on the other. So they're 10 units apart. So if you go five right or left, you'll get to the center. So then my center point is gonna occur at the coordinate two, negative three. All right, so um, my C value then, we, ju I, we just said is five. I didn't call it the C va value, but that's exactly what we're doing. All right, so my C value is five. Now, there's one more piece of information in the instructions that I haven't read yet, and that is this guy right here. Uh-oh, <laughs> let me try that again. Sorry about that. That's this guy right here, where um, I'm given a coordinate on the ellipse. So this is my XY piece. So just like we did with the circles and the parabolas, um, we're going to plug in my X, my Y, my H, and my K, and we're gonna see what we have left that's unknown. All right, so in the first fraction, you've got um, uh, my X value is two, my H value is two, so you're gonna have two minus two quantity squared over A squared. And maybe for a moment you're saying, wait a second, Miss Roberts, why is the A squared under the X's? And if you take a look at my picture, um, since my foci are running horizontally, I know that my ellipse is also going to be horizontal. For my second fraction, we're gonna have y minus k quantity squared. So that's gonna be one minus negative three quantity squared over my b squared. You say, oh dear, I have two unknowns. And that's a true statement, but just think about this. The top of my first fraction is gonna be zero. Zero divided by anything is zero. So this whole entire um, fraction is going to go away. So the only equation I really need to solve is this one right here. And so um, I'm going to multiply on both sides by my b squared. And so my b squared is going to be equal to 1 plus 3, which is 4. 4 squared is 16. So then um, I now have uh, my b squared. Now remember, you've got to have your h, your k, your a, and your b to be able to write the equation. So far, I have my h and my k, I have my b squared, the last thing I need is that a squared. So let's use little dude because I have my c value and I have my b value. We'll use little dude to find my a value. So we've got 25 for c squared is equal to a squared minus my b squared, which is 16. 
Um, just go ahead and add 16 to both sides and that'll give you 41. So my a squared is equal to 41. All right, so now I'm ready to write my equation. I have all four pieces. So um, the top of my first fraction is going to be x minus 2 quantity squared. Since this is um, a vertical, I'm sorry, since this is a horizontal ellipse, um, my a squared is going to be underneath my x's. And then my second fraction, the top is going to be y minus k quantity squared. So that's going to be y minus negative 3 quantity squared. My b squared I already found to be 16. So this is going to be your equation. The reflection question on this, we've actually already, um, we've already answered this in the introduction of ellipses. So if you go back to the first video, you can find this on what do a, b, and c represent. And you can, you can answer that. All right, example number four. In example number four, I'm asked to do several things. The first thing is that I'm asked to write the equation in standard form. Then I'm asked for the center. I'm asked for the vertices. And I'm asked for the endpoints. Okay, so I'm asked for all of these. And this is the equation that we're working with. This is going to require um, completing the square. So the first thing that I'm going to do, let me zoom in a bit here. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going, I need to get rid of those A values. So I'm going to take my X's and I'm going to factor out the A value of 4. Um, I'm fortunate on this one. My Y's don't have an A, so I don't need to factor anything out of my Y's. I only need to factor out of my X's. All right, so when I factor a 4 out, this is going to be 4 times the quantity x squared plus 6x. And you need to leave yourself some space for completing the square. Then let's add to that our y squared minus 8y. Again, leave some space to complete the square. And last but not least, my 12 is on the other side. And for now, I'm really just ignoring that 12. Okay, so when we go to complete the square for the x's, we want to take half of our b, which is 3. We want to square that, which is 9. And at first you might think, well, we're going to add 9 to both sides. But that's not necessarily true. I'm not adding a 9 because this is a 4 times a 9. All right, so let me uncover this and show you what we're, what we're going to be looking at here. Oh, that's just a repeat of what I had before. Um, I'm going to be adding 9... But really, the value of that is a 4 times a 9. So you'll notice on the other side, I didn't add a 9. I added a 36 because it was a 4 times a 9. Okay? Now, completing the square on the y pieces, we'll take half of our negative 8, which is negative 4. Squared is 16. So we'll add 16 to both sides. All right, now I'm ready for factoring my trinomials. Okay, so this first piece, I've got my 4 out front that I'm ignoring. And then I have the quantity x plus 3 quantity squared plus y minus 4 quantity squared. On the right-hand side, I need to combine my like terms. So when I combine these three, I'm going to get 64. Now, this is starting to look like my standard equation. But remember, my standard equation requires a 1 here. So let's divide all three terms by that 64, and then we can reduce fractions. So here I'm going to reduce the 4 and 64. The y's don't have anything to reduce. So that'll be x plus 3 quantity squared over 16 when I reduce, plus y minus 4 quantity squared over 64 is equal to 1. So the direction said, first of all, write the equation. Okay, so now I have the equation. Secondly, let's give the center. Well, the center is going to come from my hk, so my center is going to be at negative 3, positive 4. Negative 3, positive 4. The next thing I'm asked for is going to be the vertices. All right, now, before I uncover these vertices, sometimes um, it's very helpful to just draw a little miniature picture of what you have. So I know that my center is at negative 3, 4. Okay, notice I, I haven't even drawn axes or anything like that. I just know where my center is. The larger denominator is under the y's. 
So I know that my vertices are going to go up and down from my center. Well, if they're going up and down, it's the Y value that is changing. And um, my Y value here that's changing is going to be, uh, let's see, the A value because the distance from the center to the vertex is A value. My A value is going to be 8 because my A squared is 64. So I'm going to go up 8 units and I'm going to go down 8 units to get to my vertices. So then you have vertices at negative 3, 12 and negative 3, negative 4. Again, if you go from 4, if you go up 8, you land on 12. From 4, if you go down 8, you land on negative 4. The last thing that I'm asked for is the ends of the minor axis. So if I go back to my picture here, the ends of my minor axis have to go right and left. And the right and left value is going to come from my B squared. So my B squared is 16. Therefore, my B value is 4. So if I go right 4 and left 4, I will find the ends of the minor axis. And so if you're starting at negative 3 and go right 4, that'll land you at 1. If, you go, if you're starting at negative 3 and go left 4, you're going to land on negative 7. Notice the y value is not changing there. All right. So that was everything that that particular question asked for me to do. Let's go to part B. Um, this one, I'm asked for a little bit less. I'm still asked for the equation, and I'm asked for the center, and I'm asked for the vertices. So the first thing I have to do on my equation, I'm going to need to factor out the A value, that 9, and I also need to factor out the A value for the Ys, which is 16. So I have two sets of factoring on this one. All right, so when I factor out the 9, I'll have x squared minus 4x. Leave yourself space to complete the square. When I take a 16 out of the y's, that's going to leave me with y squared minus 4y. Again, leave yourself some space to complete the square. All right, so let's um, start completing the square. Half of b is going to be negative 2. Negative 2 squared is going to be 4. Now, don't think you're adding 4 to both sides. I am adding 4 on the inside of the brackets, but remember, this isn't truly a 4. This is a 9 times a 4. So that's what's going to be added to the other side. So I'm adding a 4, yes, but it's actually not the value of 4. It's going to be um, the value of 36. So you can see that over on the other side. I added 36 to the other side. Okay, same thing for the y's. Take half of your b, that's negative 2. Squared is 4. So I'm going to add 4 here inside the bracket. But that's not actually the value of 4. It's actually a 16 times a 4, which is um, 64. So you can see here on the other side that I've added a 64. All right, now I'm ready for my factoring. And so for the, the first piece factored, that's going to be 9 quantity x minus 2 squared. For my second piece, that's going to be 16 quantity y minus 2 squared. And then I'm also ready to combine my like terms, which is going to give me 144 on the right side. We want a 1 on the right side, so let's divide everything, all three terms, by 144. And then we'll reduce each fraction. So you're going to reduce the 9 over 44, the 16 over 144, and the 144 over 144. When you reduce those three fractions, you'll get x minus 2 squared on top over 16 plus y minus 2 squared on top over 9 is equal to 1. So this is the equation that I was asked for. The next thing that I was asked for is the center. So the center is going to occur at 2, 2. And then the last thing I'm asked for is the vertices. So once again, I like to draw just a little picture here. So if my center is at 2, 2, and my larger denominator is under the x's, that means my vertices are going to be found to the right and to the left, a distance of a. 
My a squared is 16, so I'm going to add 4 to the right, and I'm going to subtract 4 on the left. All right, so the only value that's changing is my x value. My y value is not changing. So if I take my 2 and add 4, that's going to be a 6. If I take my 2 and subtract 4, that's going to be a negative 2. So again, the y value is unchanging. So one coordinate is going to be 6, 2, and the other coordinate is going to be negative 2, 2. All right, so that wraps up um, the ellipses section. If you've got any questions, please feel free to reach out to me.